In this lesson, we are going to be setting up a basic contact form. So sending input fields, and we're going to be submitting it to an endpoint, and that's what we're going to be setting up in the next lesson. So this lesson, we're constructing the JSON object that we're going to be sending over, and right now it's just sending to the regular page as the endpoint, as we're going to be constructing the endpoint afterwards. So this uh, form also does have some validations. So we're checking to see if they're valid emails, and as well as if we've got a length of more than five characters within the name field. So once those do get adjusted, it always does the check before it actually sends the email. So it's not sending the email until it sees at least five characters in the name field, username field, and at least a valid email within the email field. So let's go ahead and open up the editor to create the contact form to send the AJAX request to the server. So I've got the standard HTML file, index.html, nothing for styling yet. And we've got a main div container with a class of container form with an ID of sign up, and then several inputs here for the name and also for the email address. There's a text area to pick up the information contained for a message area. And then also lastly, there's an input and this is a submit button. So submitting this form, well, what we wanna do is send the AJAX request. So picking it up with the fetch request and then processing the data, getting the data from the form and then sending it over to the server within a JSON format. So going into the code, First of all, let's uh, go ahead and we'll select our form. So just give it a name of my form and then using the document object and query selector, we're going to select the element with the ID of sign up. So that's our main sign up form that we're going to be selecting. I'm also going to update the view to toggle the word wrap so that we can see the full content of the text that we're writing. Next up, let's add the event listener on that form object, so the my form object. And because this is a submit button, we can add an event listener and listen for the submit action on the form itself. And we're passing over the event object because what we want to do, because this is going to be an AJAX request, we're going to be using the prevent default. So that's E prevent default. And what that does is that's going to prevent the default action of the form submission. So as before, we saw when we clicked the send message, that was actually passing in all of those parameters there. So if we comment that out, and if we hit send, we get the whole parameters there within the URL. So we don't actually want it to refresh the page or send any information, as this is going to be taken care of with our AJAX request. So that's why we're including the prevent default, so the default action doesn't happen. And within the console, and we'll just say sending data. So that's what we want to do whenever the form is hit, submitted, that we want to send the data. So we want to get all of the form contents, so all of the elements from the form itself. And there's a few ways to do that. We've seen uh, some of the ways that we can create and get form data. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to do that if you want to go through each one of them and pick up and do some vetting of the content. So make sure that the email is an actual valid email. And we are using HTML5, so it will flag that this is an email type. So it should be formatted as an email. So that, that will be flagged by the browser. Uh, but there's also just if you want to check to see the length of the content and so on, you can do that uh, before you actually submit it to the server. So let's uh, loop through all of the elements so all of the elements so all of the form inputs and we can do that with the my form object and listing out all of the elements so if we console log out and that actually should just be elements so the editor sometimes adds in extra methods so we just want to get all of the elements. So lists out all of the elements. So we've got the uh, two inputs, text area, and then this last one as well is there. So lists out the four different elements on the page. So we want to loop through all of the elements. So we have the form elements, but we're not able to actually iterate through them. 
Uh, so we need to select out, and this is because this is an HTML form controls collection. So this is different, and you can't use the iteration for the for each, but we can use the for loop in order to pick up the information that's contained within each element. So as we iterate through the elements, we can check the content that's contained within the elements. So just select the L, and we do have a length value. So that's where we can use the for loop. Increment i plus 1. And within the console, let's output each individual element using the index value as we're looping through it. So hit the send, and that gives us each one of those elements. I don't want to pick up the information that's contained within the submit button. So let's break that apart and only add, and we're going to create an object. So just create a temporary holder object. And then within this object, we're going to add to the holder, depending on what the name of the element is, and also then associating the value. So for each one that we loop through, let's select each element. And I'll just give it a name of L. And this is going to be, we're referring to that particular element object as we're iterating through. And then for L itself, using the console log, you can get and get the attribute type if we want. And the reason I'm listing that is that, so that way we can select and we can check to see if the type is going to be a submit type. And if it is, then we know we can skip it. Uh, so text, email, and null are OK. But we need to track and not actually track the data that's within the submit. So if the L type is not equal to submit, then we want to add it to our object. So let's now output into the console log the element and we'll just get the name of the element. And we can also use the get attribute, get name. So name is name here, name is email, name is message. Uh, so just double check and make sure that you're able to pull the information out. Uh, and as well, you could also just use the get attribute type as well. So those are both values within the object. And also, let's uh, get the value that's contained within it. So as we loop through, and there we've got the values that are contained within it. And with HTML, you can add the required fields. So for this case, uh, we do want to make sure that the email does have a required field for the email. So you can add in within the HTML, just required. And also, if we want to set the name to required. And what this will do is this is just a function of HTML. So now if we try to submit, we get please fill out form. And this is going to be the same flagging that since this is an email type input, the browser itself is going to be flagging those input values. So it's going to flag it that this isn't a proper email that uh, these two fields are required. So we're not actually able to do any of the submitting. So it's not getting even to the JavaScript as it's caught within the browser of the HTML when we're trying to submit it. So that's just setting it as required. I'm going to just set a default value of it. And that's just uh, one of my email addresses that I'm going to be using. So it adds in the email address. So now when we submit, we're still submitting. Everything is still back uh, as expected. We're able to submit. I'm going to comment out some of these console messages. So right now we're just getting the property name that we want to use and the value property, value property, and value. So let's add that into our holder object. So for within the holder, using the bracket notation, we're going to set the property name. And then here we can assign the value to that property.
and I'll uh, just console these as we don't need them anymore. And what, once we finish looping through within the console, we'll output the value of holder. So that constructs the JSON object that we can send over to the server and in order to do the submission of the content. So also while we're looping through here, we can check to check the different conditions as well. Uh, so we can check to see if the name is equal to name, which is the username. And I'm just gonna actually update this instead of name. Uh, let's put user to avoid any of the confusion. So now we've got the user. And actually I'm not putting the value, so I need to update that to make sure that I'm actually sending the value instead of the property name. Uh, so there's all of the JSON constructed. So let's uh, do a check to see if, and we're going to check to see if element name is equal to user. And if it is, then we want to check and get the flag to see if it's one that we want to add. So let's construct an array and then this can serve as our errors array and if at the end if the error length is equal to zero then we can actually submit the form content so we're going to be updating and adding to the error so just before we finalize and submit it we're going to be adding and checking to see if the error length is okay so as we loop through each one of the elements we're checking to see if the attribute type is submit. So we'll create a, another variable and we'll just call it val. And so this is gonna be whether it's valid or not. Uh, so we can use this as a control variable to check to see if we're actually adding it into the holder array. And then if we are throwing any errors, then we're gonna add and append to the error array. So let's set the valid to true and just before we add it, and this will just clean up the code a little bit. You can also nest them within. Uh, so it's checking to see if it's not submit. Uh, so you could have these within here, uh, or you could separate them out and check to see if it is submit. And then we're gonna set the valid to false. So now we check to see valid. And if it is valid, if it's still valid, then we add it into the holder. And if it is is equal to submit, then val is gonna be false. So val is false. And this way we could have some conditions. Uh, so we're, for the user, uh, let's say we wanna have a minimum length for the user value of five characters. And then you can set different parameters as well. And you can also do a regular expression to check to see if it's a valid email and so on. So let's select the user and check to see if the L, so we'll have another condition. So if L value, and we're checking to see if the length of the value and using the string methods in JavaScript. So every string is gonna have a length, just as we saw with the arrays. Uh, so if we make sure that it's larger than four, so five would be okay, or you could do a large greater than or equal to. Uh, so as long as it's larger than four, uh, then it's okay. And if it's actually gonna be less than five, then we're gonna flag it and update val, set that to false and then also take the error and push to the error and this is going to give us some error messages and error message name to, needs to be five plus or more so that will just push the error and then we can also check for email addresses and so on. Uh, so if we do get errors, 
then we can take the error and for each error we can output the error contents to the console and eventually we're going to provide those error details to the user. Uh, let's make it shorter, so make it four characters. And I'm going to just update this to be if error length is greater than zero. So it needs to be five or more. So it's still building the holder object. Uh, but in this case, if there are any, if the error length is greater than zero, then we're not going to be doing the submission. And if it's not, then we can do the form submission. So that's if we haven't caught any of the errors or if there haven't been any errors thrown. So another one that you can do is to check to see if it's a valid email. Uh, so you can use a regular expression for that. So let's create a function. And there's a number of functions online that you could search out and valid, validate email. So pass the email object in, and then we'll do a regular expression to check to see if it's valid. Uh, so this is the one that I typically will use, and we'll just use the JavaScript test. So the regular expression is going to check to see if there's an and sign, content, a dot, and more content. So it's going to just do a quick check and then do a return of the tested value. So this is going to return back a Boolean value of testing the email within this regular expression. So it'll be either true or false for the valid email. So let's uh, also have that condition where if, and this is going to be only if it's an email address. So if name is email, then we'll do the condition whether it's a valid email. And we can also set this to false. So if we validate email, and I'll create a variable for that, so that we can log that into the console. So we see what gets returned back from the function. Now you don't have to do this, you could just do this within the one statement. So we're checking to see if this is gonna be true or false. And depending on what the response here is, whether it is true or false, uh, whether the check comes back true or false, then we can add to the false So if check comes back and it's false, this is just gonna check to see if it's a valid email. Not valid email. And I'm actually gonna remove out the type and update this to text. So that way the HTML5 isn't gonna be checking for email. Uh, but if you are going live with it, uh, just keep your type and keep that as email so that you have the double check for the valid email address. So let's uh, try this one. And email is not defined, and that's because we're passing in the email value, but we're not getting the full value from the input. So that should be L value. And try that one more time. So not valid email, that's what we get returned back. Uh, so false, and we're pushing the errors in. So and it also allows us to track multiple errors. So it needs to be five or more, not valid email. So we can output all of this message content to the user. So And we can add that into the output area. So let's select that output area using the document and query selector. Select the element with a class of output. And then within that output, Let's update the contents of output. So take output inner HTML and we'll just set that to blank. And then as we loop through, take output and we'll just add to it. So add to the inner HTML of output the error value. So now if we're throwing any errors, and let me just double check, and we don't actually have an output content area, so let's uh, update that 
div class of output and that's where we can have the response message to the user. Uh, let's double check, see that it's working. So not valid email. And if we get both of them, so it outputs both of them to the page. And just add to it a line break. And double check, just make sure we get both of those. Name needs to be five or more characters, not valid email. And if we do get more characters, we only get the one error message. And if we don't have any errors, if it is a valid email, so if it does come with a valid email structure, then we are actually submitting the content. And, may, and this was where we can make the fetch request. So let's set up the fetch request to the server and pass the user email and message to the server. Uh, so this is where everything is valid. We've already got the data within the holder object. So from there we can take and we can do the fetch request. So let's uh, set up just a URL. And this is gonna be wherever we're sending the email to. So right now uh, we'll just send it to the same index page. And then we're gonna create the endpoints in the upcoming lessons. So we're submitting the data to the server. And this is where we can have our fetch request to the URL. And then passing in the options object. And then within the then, we get our response back. And we're going to set up the server to send a JSON response back. And then lastly, we'll get the data and output that into the console. So whatever we get back from the server. So right now we're not gonna actually get anything back, but we're just setting up uh, that we can make the request. So set up within the parameters method, and the method that we're gonna be using is gonna be post, and the body of the submission and we're not going to uh, require any headers for this. So we can just stringify the contents of holder. And that way we're setting our message. And right now we just get a 405 back because we're sending it over to our page. So we're not actually able to do a post to this page. So coming up next, we'll set up doing and creating the post for the contact form. And the post is going to be done with Google Script. So we're going to create an endpoint using Google Script's web app. And that will generate an endpoint that we can submit our form contents to and then eventually send an email. And that's going to be done with the backend code in Google Apps Script. And Google Apps Script, if you're not familiar with it, this is just like JavaScript in the cloud. It's just modern JavaScript and allows you to connect the Google services together with Script. And it can function as a backend code if you don't have a backend server, if you don't have backend code to receive the email message. And as well, you can also, if you do have it set up, if you do do any other type of backend coding, uh, you're sending over the JSON object. So as long as you're receiving that data, then you can write the server code in order to send the email messages and or store the messages. Uh, so at that point, you can do uh, what you need to do with the content and it's just being submitted. Tasks for this lesson are to create with HTML or with JavaScript your contact form, so all the fields that we, you want to use. Select the form data and add an event listener. So when the form is submitted, add the event listener. Don't forget to prevent the default action, so the event default action. Get form fields, names, and values for each one of the fields. Apply the conditions for the data for the form. So do a condition check, applying whatever conditions that are necessary for your input fields to make sure that the data that you're sending over is valid. Check and valid submission data. Create the JSON object from the input field data in order to send it using post method to an endpoint. Prepare the fetch request to the endpoint and you're going to be ready to move on to the next lesson. We're going to constructing the endpoint using Google Apps Script.